Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Advanced at Autodesk, and today I want to talk to you guys about how we can actually leverage STL files for CNC machining. Some of the other products I want to showcase is actually Autodesk Mesh Mixer, Autodesk Memento, or what it's now called Autodesk Remake, and of course Fusion 360. Also, take a look in the description below. I've actually included other videos from my colleagues. Mike Aubrey actually did a great workflow using STLs with Mesh Mixer and Memento as well as one of our other Fusion 360 users, Alex Lobos, actually did a great video on using Fusion 360 and now the new Autodesk Remake. So definitely check out those videos in the description below. Let's go ahead and dive right in. There are a couple different ways to insert an STL file. And one of the ways, if you actually have your design history turned on, you actually need to start with a base feature. So under the Create option, you can drop down and turn on Create Base Feature. And then now under Insert, you can insert a mesh. If you don't work with design history, you can actually turn it off by at the very top level, right click, say do not capture design history. And then from here now, go and say continue. From here now under insert, you can now insert your mesh that way as well. Personally, I like to capture all my design history just for parametric modeling and making design changes. So I'm gonna turn it back on and create, drop down, go to create base feature and under insert, insert a mesh. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this STL file, which is actually a scanned model of Mount St. Helen based out in Washington State. And we can actually insert the STL file, but now it's, well, what do we do with this? Well, under the bodies folder, you can see we have that mesh body. Let me go ahead and just rotate this around so you actually guys can see the reflection of all those faces. Um, now we need to move this to a, a watertight solid. So if I right click on the mesh, go to mesh to B rep. So I'm gonna convert it over to a T spline body, then to a water tight solid. If I say, okay, well, we have a limitation with infusion and we only can, we can't really deal with more than 10,000 faces. And this model actually has 54,000 faces. So how do we get it into underneath 10,000 faces? Well, this is where mesh mixer comes in. And I, and I really love this workflow to reduce, to reduce the amount of faces and then convert it over to, to B rep data. So from here, let's hop on over to Mesh Mixer. And here we want to reduce the amount of faces on this scanned model. So if we actually come over here to the very top left, click on select, and if I actually double click on the model, it would select the entire model. And now under edit, we have reduce. And the beautiful part about this now is we have different, a couple different types of choices. We could reduce it by a percentage, or we can do it by like a maximum deviation. But one thing I love is the triangle budget. And the nice thing about this part is that you can see where it says try count of a thousand. You can see just how distorted this guy went. So we went from 54,000 all the way to a thousand. Well, technically we want 10,000 because that's our limit with infusion. I can say accept, and now it's gonna give me 10,000 faces here and it, it doesn't look too bad but if I'm going to CNC machine this part I want as much detail as possible so we can do this and we can import it over and, and work with it this way but let me show you another workflow working with now Autodesk Remake which used to be Autodesk Memento and show you how we can actually go from using that product to even a, a B rep or a T spline into a watertight solid so within hopping over to, to Remake, it looks just like Memento. A lot of the same options, just a couple different interfaces, interface changes. But one thing I do love is under this, this third icon, uh, what we have is something called Decimate Mesh. Now let's actually take a look at the visualization of, of how this, this mesh actually looks or how dense it is. There's 54,000 faces here. And under decimate, this is a great way where I can come in and now just change the amount of target faces. Let's say we drop it around about you know, 25, 26,000. And I'm still gonna get a really nice mesh here. So say decimate all, it's gonna go through, decimate it, decimate the model down, still looks really good. And then from here now, I can come across to export, come on over to export model. And one thing I really enjoy about Autodesk Remake is we have now the option to do OBJ quads. And this is where this is what allows us to bring in this, this OBJ quad based model and then convert it over to T spline data and manipulate it. Um, so from here, 
pick quads and I don't want target face count of 10,000. Let's go with 25,000, a little bit more flexibility here. Click on export and we'll just export this guy right off and we'll call this 25K. I'll just give it a, a name right here, say save. Go to export that model off. And then from here now, we can bring this into Fusion 360 and then now walk through that workflow, converting it over to a, a watertight solid and then machining it. One thing I do want to point out, and this is one thing I've noticed about this model, is you know I've seen some, some issues, not even I would call issues, but just sometimes you, you might come across some holes. You might want to double check some of the work that you've actually exported off. Because remember, we're going from 54,000 faces to 25,000 faces. So I always like to, to use some of these diagnostic tools within, within Remake just to double check to make sure everything looks great, then bring it over to Fusion. So for example, if I go and go to open under the little R symbol, I'm gonna go and grab that file I just saved off and say open. Let me show you some of these diagnostic tools that we do have within Remake. Under the Analyze section, we have Detect and Fix Model Issues. So if I click Detect Issues, it will actually look at the entire model, see if there are any holes. And I actually found one little hole. And this would cause a problem when we're trying to move over to a T-spline body. So what I can do is say, go through and fix all the holes for me. Patch all those up. Everything looks great. From here now, I can just come back over here to Export. Export this model back out as a... OBJ quad base, 25,000, export off, and we'll just rename it version three, and then open this guy right into Fusion 360. Save it off, export it off, and now we're gonna hop back over to Fusion 360. So now back into Fusion 360, as you can see, I've already uploaded the file. How do I now move from this STL file and now create a B-Rep or T-Spline and then move over to a, a watertight solid so I can prep it for machining on my pocket NC. So first thing is, and this is to kind of show you how many faces we got under the display, under drop down under visual style, we can turn on with hidden edges. You can see all the faces right there. If I right click on that body, come here to convert and go in and say, okay. I'm now to convert this STL over now to T-spline data. And the reason why we can do this is because we were able to, by using Autodesk Remake, is save off as an OBJ quad base. So it allows us to take that data and then convert it over to, to T-spline data. And that's what we support right now today inside of Fusion 360. So there we have it. So you can see now we have our, the very top we have, if I turn on the light bulb, we have now our STL file. And then if I turn that off and turn on the T-spline body. Now I can actually, if I right click and say edit form, I can actually grab one of these, these edges or points or vertices and actually translate it and change that data right here. So now this is this is cha changeable data. I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape and just get out of it because I don't wanna make any changes to it. We're about halfway of the way, halfway of the way there. How do we move it now over to a, to a watertight solid? And it's gonna be that same approach that we just did earlier. So I'm gonna right click on the T-spline body, come over here and say convert, and then now say okay, and I'm gonna convert that T-spline body now over to a, a watertight solid and get it prepped over for machining. So as you can see now, we have that watertight solid body. We got the STL file, our original file here. Then we went over to a T-spline body, and then now to a solid body. And I like to turn off under the display settings, come over here to visual style, go to shaded so it looks nice and smooth. So this is one workflow of how we can actually leverage, you know, mesh mixer to reduce the amount of faces. And then we can actually even do something very similar inside of Remake, but then save it as a OBJ file, quad base, and then manipulate it and convert it over to a watertight solid to then move to machining. Now, speaking of machining, well, one thing we want to look at is, well, what's really the size of this STL file or, or size as in, you know, could this fit within the build volume of my pocket NC? If I just go under inspect, let's do a quick measurement. Let's go from this point over to this point and we're in millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and change that and let's move over to inches. So right under the, the unit section, come over here to millimeters, drop down to inch. 
And now under inspect, let's go from that point roughly out to this point right here. And we're looking at roughly, wow, 60 inches. So this is not gonna fit within my pocket NC. So one thing I love is scaling down imported geometry. And under the sculpt, if you drop down under to model, you actually can now, if I just hit the little S key in my keyboard, type in scale, I can actually filter through for one of our features called scale, pick what I wanna scale, and now, well, what's my scale factor? I wanna drop this down to 10% the size of its original size, type in 0 0.10, and now I've scaled this guy down. And let's actually take a look at how, how, how long this, this part is. So if we go from this point, maybe out to here roughly, and I'm looking at now, ah, about five, 5.8 inches, which will fit perfectly within that build envelope. So from here, off to the CNC side, under is drop down under model, come down here to cam. So first things first, we're always gonna do a setup. I'm gonna just change the side of the stock, no stock offset. And now from here, under adaptive clearing, there are a couple different options. One thing I love is when you, since I'm machining this on a pocket MC, you gotta think about step over the type of tools I'm using. One thing I like is once again, at the in the description, you can download the pocket MC tool library. And uh, if you look up here, I already have the library already set up. Grab the link and download all their tools with all the correct feeds and speeds. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this 1 8 flat end mill. And under the passes tab, I can come here and take a look at my optimal load as well as my roughing step down. If I right click and say edit expression, you can see that, well, I'm saying the full length of the flute. So that's yeah, pretty aggressive for this small machine. Maybe if I go with 40%, of the of the flute, go and say okay. Now it's gonna go and analyze the entire model and then apply that adaptive clearing strategy. And the nice thing is that adapt as that adaptive clearing is cranking through, I can actually come back up here to 3D and now once I do an, a, a roughing strategy, I wanna do a finishing strategy. So I can now go in and pick a tool, come on down here, grab, I'm gonna use probably a ball end mill for this, grab one of my ball end mills out of that pocket NC library and then go and apply that parallel strategy, just like that. So there we have it. We can apply our adaptive strategy as well as our parallel strategy. Right click, say simulate. Let's just turn off the stock and we can go ahead and show exactly that right there, being machined. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Once again, take a look at the description of all the other links I think will be of use if you're going from an STL file to a T-spline body as well as to a solid body. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up. Thanks again, guys.